Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Thursday, October 3rd, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, we're jumping ahead a little bit in in Mark chapter 6. Uh, we had the beginning of Mark chapter 6 yesterday. Um, the portion we're jumping over is um, when Mark gives the background on the beheading of John the Baptist, and that whole um, encounter between uh, John and and and, and uh, Herod. <clears throat> so we're, we're jumping over that. And then the next thing that happens is the feeding of the 5,000. So very familiar story. You know, Jesus feeding from just uh, the loaves and, and whatnot, and everybody eats and great. We all, we all know the story. Um, but the one thing that I'm, I wanted to point out was uh, verses 30 through 32. And this is something that, um, you know, I, I even just discovered sort of recently as I was uh, doing some, some reading on on these uh, on, on Mark and, and this section in particular, and how um, the the thing I was reading brought out this point that honestly I I had always ever overlooked, and so I I think I might have I don't know if I've actually brought this up in a morning prayer previously. Um, if I did, I apologize. <laughs> if this is going to be a repeat, but um, honestly, even if it is, I think it's good to hear and be reminded of. Um, and it's, it's something I think that we always need to hear. So, um, the, the feeding of the 5,000 in Mark begins at verse 30, chapter six, verse 30, it begins like this. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. So that's what begins the whole encounter because the people follow them. And even though they've gone to a desolate place to rest, the people have followed and now they have to deal with all these people. But the key thing is that is, is how it begins. And so if you recall that what hap- what they're returning from, you know, returning to Jesus is that he had sent out the 12, right? He'd sent them out to, um, to proclaim the word, to, to cast out demons, to heal the sick. So they, they went out and they were successful. Um, you know, Jesus was prevented from doing that in his hometown, so he sends out the 12, and, and it goes great. So now they return to Jesus, and they told him all that they had done and taught. So you imagine they're very excited. You know, they're, they're telling him, we did this, we did this, and we taught this, and everything was great, and oh, people listened to us, and we cast out these demons. And it, I'm sure they were writing this this high, okay? So Jesus sees this, hears this, and I'm sure he's very happy. But he says, come away by yourselves to a desolate place. So just with, with you guys, just come by yourselves to, to a desolate place, to a place away from everything and rest a while. Okay. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. So, you know, the, the, the fun thing about the feeding of the 5,000 is that, you know, we, we focus on the feeding of the 5,000, right? The, the miracle that Jesus performs, that he feeds the masses and how, you know, this is very, very much a, um, kind of a nod to how Jesus, you know, provides, you know, daily bread for us that never ends in his body and then he will feed and nourish us. And so there's a lot of these neat little connections here. Um, certainly not to, to mention just that it's the miracle of, of the, of the whole thing that, that he is divine and can do this, but we miss out on this little detail that the whole thing began because he, he wanted to feed the 12, you know, that the, they, there were so many people coming and going and they were, they were already, you know, they probably you know, needed a rest from all their activity, but they were so busy with everybody coming to, to Jesus that they had no leisure even to eat. So they weren't even able to get a meal in. So this is the beauty of what Jesus does here. He says, okay, you know what? We're going to get away. We're going to get away so you can rest. Um, you know, we, we, the feeding of the 5,000, we get so caught up with all the activity. We lose sight of the fact that the, the original intention for Jesus to give rest to his disciples. And so um, the, the beautiful thing 
about this and, and what we often overlook is that Jesus con- is concerned about our rest. You know, he's concerned about how busy we are. He's concerned that, you know, that we're burning the candle at two, both ends, that we're, we're stretching ourselves too thin. So he wants to give us rest. He wants to make sure that we are resting. You know, and, and certainly we, we can look to the, the giving of the Sabbath. That he's like, okay, there, there's these six days, but on the seventh day, you rest. Don't do any work. Okay? This is a day for, for you to rest, to rejuvenate, to rest in me, to receive my word, to be fed by it, and so that you are restored on that day. And so in, in a similar way here, he's reiterating that, you know what? He's, he's mindful of the fact that we need to rest, and he wants us to. He provides time for his disciples, a time and a place, apart from all this, you know, all the, the hustle and bustle. Apart from all that, he provides a time and a place for us to receive that rest. Now, of course, it doesn't work out as intended because all the people come. But even when all the people come, you know, and, and you imagine that the disciples are just like, they're, they're already overwhelmed. And now it's even more overwhelming. And, you know, and the, their thought is like, how are we supposed to feed them? I mean, what, what, what can we possibly do? And, you know, Jesus's message to the disciples, as well as to the people, is, I will feed them. I've got this. I will do the feeding. Um, so even when, when the disciples are, find themselves overwhelmed again, Jesus takes over. He handles the, 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 the heavy lifting here. So, um, so like I said, I, I might have shared this in a, uh, in a morning prayer previously, but um, it's, I think it's important enough to reiterate it and to remind you <laughs> and me that, um, you know, th- there, there is good, a lot of good in rest. And if we are at that point where we need to take a rest, it is an okay thing. You know, it, it is not a sinful thing to to prioritize, you know, you sometimes, that, that you might need to take a break. Um, you can't be going, 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 going all the time without any, any break. So Jesus is aware of this. Jesus knows. And uh, when, when he sees you burdened, when he sees you um, taxed and, and spent, he wants you to rest. <laughs> he wants you to to take that break and to um, to rest not only just physically but spiritually to to allow him to feed you you know through his word to, to bolster you up to to give you to refill and then give you what you need to, to carry on um, so yeah if if you need rest take some rest if you need a break take a break it's okay um, Jesus wants you to <laughs> he's concerned about you. Take a rest. Uh, so yeah, that's um, Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Thursday. Hope you have a great day today, and I will see you tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.